Good morning, everybody from Gracia. This is the Rorschach, Georgia update from the 31st of August, 2023. Quick summary of what's going down in Georgia. Let's kick this episode off with international affairs. On Monday the 28th, the Bled Strategic Forum took place in Slovenia. Charles Michel, European Council President, urged the EU and aspirant states to prepare for enlargement by 2030. He also announced upcoming EU Council talks on opening negotiations with Ukraine, Moldova, Bosnia and Herzegovina, and Georgia. Michel called states with EU potential, like Georgia, future member states, highlighting a merit-based process. He stressed the role, the rule of law, in their swift progress as EU entry brings responsibilities and benefits. He cautioned new members against importing past conflicts into the EU. Also, he proposed a confidence clause in the Ascension Treaties to ensure that countries that have just joined the EU cannot block the ascension of future member states. Following Michelle's speech, Irakli Kobachidze, Georgian Dream, or Otsneba Chair, said Georgia would receive EU candidate status later this year. Interestingly, after Michelle's speech, there was a wave of optimism about Georgia's EU candidate status among some politicians and politologists. Pata Zakareishvili, former state minister for reconciliation and civic equality in the Otsneba government, said that the EU would grant Georgia candidate status despite Otsneba sabotaging Georgia's EU path. On to domestic affairs on Wednesday the 30th, the government prevented President Zurabashvili from meeting with European leaders to push for Georgia's candidacy for EU membership. Mm-hmm. Mamukam Dinaradze, leader of the Otsneva faction in parliament, stated that the president's international visits without the government's consent are unconstitutional. He said Otsneva denied Zurabashvili international visits because of president, president's speech against the government in March this year after the March protest against Otsneva's Russian law. Dinaradze said that the opposition and the president did everything to sabotage Georgia's EU candidate status. Odd thing for him to say, since as everybody knows, it's Otsneba that is in fact doing the sabotaging. For context, Otsneba has blocked Zurabashvili from international visits before. After the Russian invasion of Ukraine, Zurabashvili wanted to visit European capitals, but Otsneba did not give her permission. Moving on to the march in support of Ukraine's Independence Day, on Thursday the 24th, hundreds of people gathered in Tbilisi to celebrate Ukraine's Independence Day and show their support for the country amidst Russian invasion. Ukrainians at the rally expressed their gratitude to the Georgian people by chanting glory to Georgia and long live Georgia. The event featured singing of Georgian and Ukrainian anthems and patriotic songs. The march began at the Tarashevchenko monument and concluded in front of the parliament building. Similar rallies took place in Batumi and Kutaisi. Politicians from the ruling party and opposition congratulated Ukraine on Independence Day and wished the country victory, territorial integrity, and peace. Speaking of Ukrainians, on Tuesday the 29th, Georgian border guards allowed the entry of six Ukrainians who had been stranded for over 10 days at the Russian-Georgian Zemolarsi border checkpoint in fear of returning to Russia. The Ministry of Foreign Affairs said promptly informed the Ukrainian embassy in Georgia about the situation, but the Ukrainian side said that it would take some time to resolve the issue. However, while waiting for a response from the embassy at the border, one of the Ukrainian citizens' health deteriorated, so the foreign ministry granted them entry into Georgian territory. They will remain there until the Ukrainian embassy decides what to do with them. On Wednesday the 30th, Power is in Unity movement, which monitors the occupation line, reported that Russian occupying forces are reinforcing checkpoints in Zhinvali. Movement leader David Katsarava said that they are now building an additional defense fence about two kilometers away from the Sentry Highway in Orcho San Jorveleti. He said that drone footage shows that Russian engineers are actively creating trenches and fortified structures. Reports also said that Russian occupiers have been harassing locals. Russian occupation forces blocked access to two local churches, preventing residents from celebrating Mariya Moba on Monday the 28th, which is a religious holiday commemorating the Assumption of Mary into Heaven.
Also, Russian soldiers threatened to arrest and handcuffed those approaching the churches. On Tuesday, the 29th, the deputy mayor of Oni Municipality reported that the landslide death toll in Shovi reached 31 and that rescue teams are looking for two more individuals. On the same day, the Ministry of Defense announced the death of one of the soldiers it sent to join the rescue team. The ministry said that Tembur Karchilava, instructor of the second training course at the training center, possibly died of a heart attack while doing rescue work in Shovi. On Tuesday, the 29th, heavy rainfall and strong winds affected Tbilisi, causing damage to electricity cables and resulting in flooding of streets and underpasses. Tbilisi Municipality and Emergency Management Services collaborated to tackle these challenges, and all local administrations have been involved in making in managing the situation. Tbilisi City Hall told citizens to stay inside and call the hotline if necessary. Kahi Kaladze, mayor of Tbilisi, stated that the Guldani district faced the hardest consequences of the rainfall. Municipality services evacuated a flooded house, relocating affected family. On Tuesday the 29th, David Nozadze, state representative of Mschetum Tianeti, announced that there was a massive rock slide near the Shio Cave or Shio Vgime Monastery Complex, the largest monastic community in Georgia built in the 6th century. Nozadze told people not to visit the monastery due to the removal of the rocks that had fallen. He said that specialists have a plan to remove the rocks and check if the monastery was damaged. The National Environmental Agency, however, stated that the monastery did not suffer any significant damage. On Friday the 25th, the Rustavi Municipality City Hall published that the Renewed Regions Program has propelled active phase projects in Rustavi. Rustavi received a total investment of 50 million lati, or about 20 million U.S. dollars for the program. It encompasses 30, sorry, 63 municipalities and will finance projects such as rehabilitating important cultural or historical heritage objects, arranging recreational spaces, and developing appropriate tourist infrastructure. Rustavi City Hall said that they have already finished renovating Rustavi's entrance and squares. King Tamar, Giuli Shartava, Shoto Rustaveli, Lado Mskatishvili Street, Fame Memorial, and their adjacent areas. City Hall also said that the next phase of the program will benefit Friendship Street. On Wednesday the 30th, an international development consulting company called PMCG, haven't heard of them, published a report on employment and salaries in Georgia. The report said that the number of individuals receiving monthly salaries increased by 5% compared to 2022, by 7% compared to 2021. Moreover, July witnessed a 27% increase in individuals receiving monthly salaries of 2,400 lati or 900 U.S. dollars a month or more compared to 2022, a 9% increase compared to 2021. Additionally, the number of people earning 9,600 lati, around 3,600 U.S. dollars or more per month, in July surged by 27% compared to 2022 and by an impressive 63% compared to 2021. Not sure whether those are largely Russian back-end and front-end developers who've relocated to Tbilisi. On Monday the 28th, EU Neighbors East, the EU communication program for eastern neighborhood countries, announced that young individuals from Kaspi, Adigeni, and Batumi received training to detect and authenticate misleading content in modern media. Though the training sessions, uh, through the training sessions, participants gained the ability to assess the credibility of sources, images, and videos. Additionally, they acquired proficiency in using a specialized online tool to verify geolocation information. The project aims to fortify democracy and uphold human rights in Georgia by enhancing public awareness and comprehension of media freedom, media information, literacy, and it adverse impacts of disinformation. Great new book called Ethics of Political Commemoration by Hans Goodbrot and David Wood. It proposes a new ethical framework for how museums and others should commemorate past politics and conflict. It's adapted from the just war tradition, keeping in mind that remembrance is often conducted with political and even coercive intent. The framework seeks to improve debates so that remembrance of past may transform relationships 
in the present and build a shared future rather than divide people. Offering a moral argument with lots of examples, they draw on experiences from Armenia, Georgia, Ireland, Lebanon, and Libya, while also connecting to mainstream stream debates in Western Europe and the U.S. So, if you run a museum or go to them or care about Georgia or history or the world, read this book. That's it for this week. Thanks for joining us. We shared Georgia's top stories of the week. Now it's your turn to spread the word about these updates. And don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Nachbandis.